We are back in the years 1980 and 1982, continuing May the Force Be With You May and our look at the Empire Strikes Back toy line by Kenner. Last time, we took a look at the Rebel Commander and the invented for the toy line MLC-3 mini rig. This time, we are once again with the Rebels on Hoth as we check out not one, but two toys with the Rebel Soldier in Hoth battle gear and the Radar Laser Cannon here on Creed's Collection. Hey, welcome back to another episode of Creed's Collection, and may the force be with you, May. Today, we're taking a look at the Rebel Soldier in Hoth Battle Gear and the Radar Laser Cannon from the 1980 and 1982 Empire Strikes Back toy line by Kenner. So let's get started with the Rebel Soldier. Rebel Soldiers, also known as Rebel Troopers or Alliance Troopers, were the frontline soldiers of the Rebel Alliance in their fight against the evil Empire during the Galactic Civil War. Initially, they were formed from loosely connected resistance cells, but under the leadership of Mon Mothma, the leader of the Rebel Alliance, they became an impressive and well-trained galaxy-spanning infantry. And now that we know a bit more about the Rebel Soldiers, let's take a closer look. The Rebel Soldier in Hoth Battle Gear is the first Star Wars action figure I remember receiving as a child, and I used to carry him with me everywhere. Until I got Luke Skywalker in Hoth Battle Gear, this was my Luke Skywalker in Hoth Battle Gear. His face was generic enough that it worked for Luke, even though it's a pretty good sculpt. Here he's got some gear, a belt, and his rank insignia, and I really enjoy the fact that they broke up his coloring by putting the brown vest on him, unlike the Rebel Commander. He has the same boots as the Rebel Commander and Luke Skywalker, but I have to say once again, I really like how these look. I think they're well detailed and nice. As we come around to the back side of the figure, you can see he doesn't have a survival pack like the Rebel Commander, but they alleviated that later, and one day we'll talk about that. Now we're going to go ahead and take a look at the articulation on the Rebel Trooper, starting with his hips. He has a 90 degree bend forward, as you can see, but unfortunately the leg, it really doesn't go back at all. His shoulders have a joint that can go up all the way around full 360 if you wanted. His head can turn left and right. And that's it. That covers all five points of articulation for the Rebel Soldier. Now we're going to take a look at the Rebel Soldier's included weapon, his blaster pistol. I like this gun quite a bit. It is a generic weapon that's included with a few Star Wars figures, but it doesn't stop me from thinking it looks pretty sweet. And it also has some nice detailing in it, even though it's kind of hard to see. And what do you know? The Rebel Soldier can actually hold his gun. Even though he doesn't actually put his finger on the trigger, I don't care. He holds it great, it fits in his hand perfectly, and it stays there. The copyright information for the Rebel Soldier is on the back of his legs. On the top leg you see 1980 Lucasfilm Limited, and on the bottom leg, made in Hong Kong. Alright, now it's time to look at the Radar Laser Cannon, also known as the 1.4 FDP Tower. It's an anti-vehicle artillery weapon manufactured by Atgar Space Defense Corporation. They were extremely inexpensive and could operate in brutal temperatures from extreme heat to bitter freezing cold. While it has tank treads, it's not a mobile weapon and they are used simply to get it into position or to turn to face other targets. Unfortunately, it takes a crew of four to operate and is prone to overheating and misfire. And now that we know a bit more about the radar laser cannon, let's take a closer look. The standout feature of the radar laser cannon has to be the dish here on the front that actually concentrates the energy and fires the beam. In the film, light would actually go from the edges to the center and then fire out. You only see this once, but it's pretty cool. And as you can see, the dish has a lot of really great detail built into it. You can see here on the side, there's a control panel sticker and there's supposed to be one on the front here, but unfortunately it fell off. I got this in my Star Wars thrift store score, and if you exclude that sticker missing, it's pretty much in mint condition. Here from the side view, you can see that the dish can be angled backwards about 45 degrees, and that way it can take out aerial targets. Of course, you can angle it back straight forward to take on those pesky AT-AT walkers as well. Now, here on the back of the unit is a small black button, and that activates its action feature, which causes the unit to explode. And we'll come back to that here in just a bit. First, I want to turn it around and let you see that it is identical on both sides and it does have the sticker as well. Now, right down here on the bottom, you can see the simulated tank treads. 
Unlike the MLC3 though, there are no wheels built in. They're simply hard molded plastic, as you can see. So it really doesn't roll, it just kind of slides around. But the idea was, of course, that they would roll it into battle on these tank treads. Usually it's sitting still, so technically it doesn't really matter. Even though this was supposed to be an inexpensive toy, you can tell they didn't cheap out on the mold. There's a lot of really nice detailing that makes it look mechanical and believable. All right, now we're gonna take a look at the action feature. Hit this button and boom. Three, two, one, explode. Oh, it's supposed to break into four pieces. And after a little bit of experimentation, I realized that when the radar dish is fully up, it doesn't wanna pop apart. You have to angle the dish back and then it does great. Booyah, that's what I'm talking about. You know, the fact that they built in an exploding feature in this toy does not bode well for the Rebels. Rebel soldier reporting for duty, sir. Hey, uh, at ease there, soldier. All right, you're going to be operating this radar laser cannon over here. Think you can handle it? Of course I can, sir. Let me at it. All right, let me show you how it works. Well, uh, you stand back here, and this is where you fire from. Sir, yes, sir. Um, sir, according to this, it takes four people to operate. Sir? Sir? Oh, uh, you're gonna be fine, Trooper. Don't worry, I just got something to take care of back at the base. All right, I can do this. Let's turn on the power, and oh no, according to this, they're prone to overheating. Please don't overheat. Please don't overheat. Please don't overheat. <laughs> Poor Rebel Soldier, doomed to fail. The copyright information for the radar laser cannon is located on the bottom between the treads. Lucasfilm Limited, 1982 made in Hong Kong. And now for our He-Man size comparison. Of course, the Rebel Soldier and the Radar Laser Cannon are kind of small compared to He-Man. And he doesn't think much of the Radar Laser Cannon as it's kind of primitive compared to the Laser Cannon on Castle Grayskull. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch my toy retrospective for the Rebel Soldier and Hoth Battle Gear and the Radar Laser Cannon from the 1980 and 1982 Empire Strikes Back toy line by Kenner. The Radar Laser Cannon has become one of my favorite Star Wars toys in my collection. I think it looks really cool, and I like that it's representing something that's really classic from the film. And my Rebel Soldier was pretty much always in my pocket in kindergarten and first grade. I was always sneaking him to school with me. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, please leave a thumbs up. And if you have any thoughts, please leave a comment. I love reading and responding to them. And while you're at it, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. I'd really appreciate it, and it would help my channel grow. I do a retrospective on a toy or toys from my vintage collection every Wednesday. So hope to see you next week and every week after here on Creed's Collection.